So we are live on Facebook. I know that means nothing to you, Steve. It means nothing to me, Chase. Nothing to Steve. <coughs> and we are live on Instagram. Just because of the delay. I still don't have you, but I'll wait for it. I'll believe you. What's up, Steve? Steve, Steve word on the street is we're going to another dimension today. Oh. Justin's got portals open. He's opening up portals. <laughs> we're going to teleport over to Justin so that we can talk about portals and the geometry of them. <laughs> Teleportation. I like that, Chase. We're going to another galaxy, Justin. Word on the street. <laughs> you are, you're already there. I guarantee am. you're not part of ours. Not, <laughs> not at all. I, nobody wants to claim you. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah, today is Tech Tuesday, isn't it? It is Tuesday, right? It is, it is Tech right Tuesday. Day. Long past due Tech Tuesday. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, I was over at the Mud Nationals last weekend, or last week, so we didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, Steve and the guys took over. Thank you very much. Um, you and then... Thursday, what was it? There was another reason why we really couldn't do all of our, our portal stuff. So, Tech Tuesday, we're going to get back on the drawing board. We're going to do some technical stuff. I mean, actually, lots of, a lot of technical drawings. So, those of you who like to talk about front suspension and geometry, then you're going to geek out over this. Uh, for everybody else, your eyes are going to roll in the back of your head and probably going to hate this video, but that's fine with us because I like geeking out over this kind of stuff. So, let's get right into it. Portals. What is a portal? Well, I really kind of wanted to have one in my hands to show you, um, but we didn't get it in the mail in time. But basically, if you're on the east coast of the U.S. or anywhere where there's a bunch of mud, then you know exactly what a portal is. But it's a drop-down mechanism to take the drive of a final spindle or upright uh, and drop it down four, six, or eight inches typically are the different heights that portals will drop at. In essence, it's a gear-to-gear -gear mechanism that allows you to lift your UTV by exactly that amount, four, six, or eight inches, somewhere in that range, depending on what you want to actually fit on there for wheel and tire, and what you can actually fit on the UTV you have when it comes to turning radius. Now, Matt had a chance to go on a couple of mud rides at the Mud Nats. We got some good pictures of you completely under mud. Yep. And uh, the UTV you were in was completely under mud. Oh, yeah. And, and I'll tell you this. It was the first time that I've ever been out to one of those events and see what everybody gets a chance to do. And I'm not a mud guy. I mean, we're, we're fast desert guys, but I can see how everybody would really get into it back there. And I had the ultimate or utmost respect for what everybody on that side of the country is doing to their UTV. Um, lifting them the way they are and the reasoning behind it and Matt you got a chance to actually go on one of the runs How would you describe it to those who are desert guys? Um, not to the mud guys. They know exactly what you're going to talk about. Describe um, it to desert guys. It's uh, Muddy that's for sure. <coughs> um, it's definitely an interesting experience. Eloquent Matt. Yeah, but, uh, nailed it. <laughs> but uh, you, know, you, you know everything's in low gear. You're going slow. You're not really trying mm -hmm. to go as fast as possible because you'll break stuff pretty quickly there um it's interesting because a lot of times you don't even see what's underground there's a lot of ruts under there mm -hmm. and you can actually really feel them as you're going um but uh yeah it's weird i mean i've been to mud nationals in tyler texas where it was kind of like a red mud it was a completely different texture than what was at uh in arkansas and the one in arkansas was I don't know how to describe it. It was More thick and clay, nasty. Kind of something you'd build an adobe brick house out of? Yeah, I mean, as soon as it dried, <clears throat> it was like cement. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, it was my first experience really going mud in, and it was a good time. You know, one thing that I saw is that everybody's kind of, uh, we would compare it to like a uh, going jeeping, where there's 10 jeeps in a row, everybody's going five mile an hour or less, just trying to crawl over different obstacles all day. But the difference with this, number one, everybody's got something that's lifted to get through the mud. But I think that, that everybody had the most fun when somebody got broke. That was, that was the most fun. When somebody broke, everyone got out, got a lawn chair, and had a, a look and a hand at trying to fix it. And they're tying uh, winch cables from tree to tree and then throwing a winch cable over that one to pick something out of the mud and try and work on it. And it was kind of a badge of honor to be broken, fix it, and continue on. So completely different than what we do, and I think it's really impressive. If being broke was fun, man, you had to have tons of fun out there. <laughs> <laughs> just just kick him. Just kick him right, right square in the nuts. Um, okay, so back to portals. So if you guys, uh, you know what a portal is, you're, you're, uh, this is easy, but if you have never seen one, then it's basically a, a bill of aluminum case with a, a few gears in it, 
and I've kind of got one driven, uh, taken apart. So imagine that the axle of the UTV is coming through this upper gear, and these are uh, gears, okay? I didn't put teeth on them because I don't feel like drawing that much. But basically, you've got an upper axle gear, you've got an idler, and you've got a driven. This driven is going to be what is connecting to the wheel and tire outside of this portal. Now, the three gear systems were popular in the past, but the idlers tend to be weak. So now, you've got typically a four gear system with two idlers. Another thing, if you look at the rotations, if the axle gear is rotating clockwise, the idlers are, are gonna go counterclockwise so that you get a clockwise motion for the wheel and tire finally for a final drive. Another thing to look at, I didn't just draw this smaller and larger on, per, uh, on accident, but the axle gear, whatever diameter that might be, let's say three or four inch in diameter, as you start stepping up the idler or the driven, this lowers the gear ratio. And it is very popular to have, say, a, a 10 or 30% underdriven system. So it's like taking uh, your, your 10 speed and dropping it down two gears. And it's permanently in a lower gear. Well, there's a couple reasons for that because we just talked about how slow typically a mud ride is. It's all in low gear in the trans and then slow speeds. And you really want to have um, the extra torque to get over things, the extra torque to spin a big wheel and tire. Also, when you go to a bigger wheel and tire for the mudden, so 38s, 40s, 42s, then you really want that gear ratio stepped down, otherwise that tire alone would have put you in a really high gear. So the drop down ratios are really helpful. Did you have something, Steve? I, I just oh. have a specific question, yeah, nothing on here. Uh, everyone wanted to let you know that they are very happy that we were on time today. Uh, so oh. good job, Chase. <laughs> uh, second, can you go fast with portals? Like, could you go 60 mile an hour with portals? Oh, uh, there's nothing that would stop you from doing that. Um, you probably have some oil overheating or gear issues in most of the portal designs that I've seen. They're not designed to go fast. So if we were to race one, I guess... Like, could, could you race one if you wanted we, to? We could race a portal if we had some sort of cooling system on it because we're going to be 60, 80 miles an hour. Yeah. And they're not designed for it. Also, the seals in most portals will probably have to be a higher grade seal for the temp. Um, also, we wouldn't run like a six or eight inch portal. We might run maximum of four. Yeah. Um, because a four inch lift in a desert car can be helpful, but anything past four inches is gonna add leverage to the system in a negative way, and we start breaking parts, guarantee that. So, uh, portals aren't gonna be a, a desert, typically a desert thing. You're gonna run into issues with the speed, gonna run into issues with the leverage, which we'll cover that here in a second. If you guys have something, just yell. What was it? I was, I was gonna say, wait till you sit in one of those UTVs with those tractor tires. That throws a lot of stuff when you try start picking up any bit of speed. It's part of the reason is because it just grabs everything and it's chucking it up on you. Yeah, so I mean, you're never gonna have speed in the mud, right? But you that could have speed going. for desert raising. What if, what if we did? I mean, we actually thought about running a portal in, in this. And, and if you look at some of the fastest uh, four-wheel drive trophy trucks, like a Mason trophy truck, runs a portal front spindle. So uh, that's a, about a six-inch draw uh, in four-wheel drive. And the reason is to try and keep the amount of travel in the system uh, equal to what they could have had in two-wheel drive without CV axle angles. So it's being done, but it, it's expensive. The parts are really high dollar and you need a lot of cooling, maybe even radiator systems. Yeah. <laughs> so, <What? laughs> so, so they said that word on the street is Chase has a two inch portal. Only two, <laughs> <laughs> Only two inch portal in the game, baby. <laughs> so um, inside a portal, you've got typically now four gears, axle, idlers, and driven. You can get different ratios to step it down. Now let's look at what a portal does um, to the geometry of the front end. Now we've had other videos if you want to go back and look at them on wheel and tire offset, how it affects scrub radius and front geometry. You can go back and look at those. This is kind of a rehash of it, so I'll go and go through real quick. If you're looking at the front of the vehicle or from the very front of the vehicle, and you're looking, this is an upper control arm, the spindle or upright, lower control arm, and this is a tire and wheel cut in half, and here's the ground. Typical geometry that you want to have when it comes to scrub radius, you draw an imaginary line through the upper and lower ball joint, that is a kingpin inclination angle, where it meets the ground and where the center line of the tire is where it meets the ground. You wanna have that gap between those two under half an inch. What that does is it keeps all of the rocks, chatter, whoops, from trying to turn the tire for you and coming back into the wheel 
as feedback that will typically wear out rack and pinions and other things. When you move the wheel and tire offset out wider, it ruins that scrub radius and gets more feedback in the wheel. It tends to wear out components faster. Steve. Justin, a couple people want to know, when you do portals, should you upgrade your axles? It's a very good thing. Uh, yes, axles have to be bigger and stronger. Reason is you're going to have a lot more load and torque put on that axle when the gear ratios are lowered, when you're running it in low, and when you have a bigger wheel and tire. So axles tend to break very, very quickly. And you'll see everybody over, I mean, for instance, Matt, so, uh, the booth across from us, which were also our, ho our hosts, High Lifter, mm -hmm. Um, what did they have in their booth that was probably eight pallets? Stacks and stacks of uh, high lifter axles that are specific for what we are running portals. Right. So upgraded axles for all this stuff. When guys are going I out on I saw many runs, guys going in and out with boxes. On their shoulders. Yes. <laughs> yeah, every run they're throwing a couple axles in them. So uh, you definitely have to have something really, really good when you start running the loads and the extra torque that a portal is going to give you. Matt. Uh, Tim Ramirez says portals are also handy for rock crawling. Uh, they are because you're going to get the ride height that you need to get over the top of obstacles like rocks, Steve. Well, speaking of rock crawling, Jay Hop wanted to know, would a portal work at King of the Hammers or would speed sections kill them? Are they durable enough to withstand? Because I've seen some gnarly stuff at King of the Hammers. Okay, so yes, they will help in the rock sections. Yes, they, they wouldn't have any, ne there wouldn't be a negative for a portal in the speed sections if the portals were a four inch or less. And if you had some sort of cooling mechanism on the portal, I think you would overheat it, honestly, if you have some high speed stuff for a long time on a portal. So maybe there needs to be a new design uh, of, of a portal put out there. May I'm just gonna throw that out there, everybody that's already making portals. Maybe there should be a desert version, who knows. So, proper geometry on the front, very little scrub radius on the bottom, great for feedback, there's very little feedback, and steering response is badass. Here is a portal system. So, you have the same upper arm, same upright, and you have the same lower arm with ball joints and kingpin angle, but then you shove a portal in the middle of it. Now, this is the gear, axle gear, there'll be an idler gear on the sides, and then you have a driven gear, and that's driving this hub that's got the wheel and tire on it. This offset and width added to the system is what comes down here to the ground level and gives you a scrub radius increase that's massive. You see that on there, yep, Chase? Yeah. All right, see what you're talking about is like half an inch to about five inches. So a massive change. When you add that kind of scrub radius to the front geometry, now all you've done is just put a ton of leverage on the steering. Instead of going through a bump and having that bump translate through the tire, tire go straight over the top of it and not steer the car, the wheel and tire package is much wider at the ground. So that rock has huge leverage on that spindle and on that assembly and just destroys rack and pinions, uh, comes back in the steering. If you're going slow, like we talked about, five miles an hour in low gear through the mud, it may not be a giant negative um, and wear out your arms, but it certainly is gonna wear out all the components. There's a lot more load involved in this front end than just scrub radius and steering components. Let's go back over here, Chase. This assembly, let me describe what we're looking at. So this would be a view from the side of the vehicle looking straight through the tire. And this is the center of your upright spindle and your tie rods connected here. This is your upper ball joint with an upper control arm on it, lower ball joint with lower control arm on it. And I've drew, drawn in the radius, lower radius of a 32 inch tire. Let's just plug in some force numbers for a standard UTV. So let's just say this is a Polaris or a Can-Am and this is what we'll, we'll be racing in the desert, right? So a 32 inch tire on a standard spindle. If you were to take the tire where it contacts the ground and put a hundred pound feet of torque on it, a hundred pounds of force, trying to rotate this tire one direction or the other, okay? And, and I, this doesn't mean that's what a rock gives you. It doesn't mean that's what the horsepower of the engine or torque of the engine is gonna give you. I'm just pulling a number out of the air. If you just put a hundred pounds of force on that tire and do the math back to the center line of the spindle, come out four inches, to the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint, they're gonna see 66 pounds of force on both joints if you put 100 pounds on the bottom of a tire at 32 inches, okay? That right there 
this typical ratio for any desert racing UTV or even you guys, whoever's running it hard, stock. You just might have a 30 inch tire so the forces are going to go down. Let's take the same exact system and make it a portal. Come over to this side, Chase. All right. So now we've got this looking from the side of the vehicle, looking through an imaginary tire, looking at the upright or spindle with an upper control arm and ball joint, lower control arm and ball joint, and now I've drawn in a portal, in this drop-down portal assembly. So if this was a three-dimensional or um, see-through, then that's your gear assembly in the portal. This is an eight-inch portal. 4 inch spacing from center line to upper ball joint, center line to lower ball joint, another 4 inches to the bottom of the portal drive. I'm going to put on here a 42 inch tire and I've done the math for a 42 inch tire. If you put 100 pounds of force on the bottom of that tire, this upper ball joint is going to see 375 pounds of force. Now. That's a massive change. It is almost six times the force on that upper joint than the factory system has. And this is why most everybody with portals have got um, arms that have ripped off or, or ball joint failures, and that's why big ball joints are made for these. Um, frame mounts, frame supports, control arm um, upgrades at the bushing. Bushing tabs tend to rip off. There's a ton of leverage on this that is hard to quantify unless you start putting some math to it. So now, that's if basically I just grab the tire and I rotate it with 100 pounds on my fist, right? What if you bound the system up and you hit a rocket with 500 pounds of force? Or what if you bounce this thing up against a, a lift that you have to crawl over a log and you're, you're kind of in the throttle and it's not moving, not moving, it's kind of crying over the log and it finally breaks loose and gets over that log? or that ledge, let's say that was 800 pounds of force. At 500, that upper control arm is going to see 1,875 pounds on it. Jeez. Ooh. At an 800 pound hit or an 800 pounds of force at the tire, that upper arm sees 3,000 pounds. What upper arm? Of, of force. Yeah, so Mitch, you got a perfect <laughs> one. What upper arm? What upper arm? <laughs> There's no arm left on something like that. And, and 800 pounds of force is really easy to do. I mean, we do it pretty regularly just by hitting whoops. So even at slower speeds, um, you guys are, with a portal are going to see it when things get bound up and finally break loose. That's when you're going to see those loads. Steve. Justin, talking about all the loads and stuff like that, would you have to change or upgrade your uh, front diff? Absolutely. I mean, diffs blow. So anything in diffs the drive can blow up line. Without that. Yeah, I mean, so anything in the drive line is going to see these forces put back into the drive line. Now, they're not going to be the same numbers because we're just figuring um, upper arm ball joint, like trying to rip the arm off the car kind of forces what I'm giving you now. But all the torque loads are going to go up. So that's why axles break. Front diffs are going to go. Drive lines um, driving the front diff and transmissions, all of which right down the line you're going to find the weak links. Now, I'm not saying portals are bad because portals have a use. Um, they have a, a specific need in the mud and I can really, really appreciate it after seeing what everybody has put them through and why they need them um, in this type of stuff. I just, uh, I'm just kind of pointing out some more numbers. So now look at the factory system again. What if this factory system was, say, raced in the desert and you nail the bottom of the tire with 500 pounds or 800 pounds? At 500 pounds, the upper arm only sees 330 pounds of force. At 800 pounds, it only sees 528. Compared to? Compared to 1,803,000 pounds. 2,500 pounds more. Yeah, I mean, uh, us blowing through the desert wow. and hitting a 800 pound for, pounds of force, rotational force on the bottom of that tire is barely more than what the upper arm sees on a portal system with 100 pounds of force on it. It's just a dra It's six times or more. And I'm not even figuring any of the shock loading. I mean, 800 pounds might be a gradual thing, but what if it was we? <clears throat> I mean, that could be thousands of pounds of force, which would translate into 10 or 15,000 pounds on the upper arm. Uh, do people upgrade their power steering when running portals to compensate for the big ass tires? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't know if people do, but I think that they are. Matt? We got asked. That quite, quite a few times there. Uh, mm -hmm. 
for recommendations. So, of course, we recommend... I mean, I would. Yeah, we recommend stuff like e-power steering, which we've got experience using. Like, mm -hmm. hey, that kind of stuff will probably be beneficial around those really big tires. Shame yeah, and any anytime you put a big wheel and tire on something, more power steering is going to be needed. And in this, this would be like the pinnacle of needing more power. So I don't know if the guys are out there doing it, but they should. And e-power steering makes an 800 watt system, which is the highest, I believe. So that would be what I'd suggest, Steve. Uh, Diversified Fab wanted to say Chase must be drooling with all of the load talk. Hashtag mm. YXZ. I can't contain myself. <laughs> Have you ever? Has anyone ever seen a portaled YXZ? I would love to see one. I, I didn't see I any out there. See one. Not one. I'd love to see one. Why do you guys think that is? Hmm. Chase. Imagine the load it would bring. <laughs> all the girls to the yard. All the milk to the yard. What is that? Oh, something. I did. Ha I did ask you. Did you see any YXZs at Mud Nationals? Mm, absolutely not. What about you, no, Matty Boy? Not a single one. I will tell you what. Why I think, and it's not just. I mean, we we love to make fun of them, but that's that's all we're doing. In reality, I don't think anybody has them there because it's a clutch system, you know. And if you're doing five miles an hour, then you're constantly clutching it. I don't think the clutches are gonna are, are gonna live, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. What do you got? But I did see some old 800s out there, mudding like small tires out there going for broke, covered in mud. So <laughs> I think it's just they don't like them. Mm. Oh, there you go, Chase. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> um, so now that we've talked about some of the geometry, some of the, the math involved in what happens with this kind of stuff, um, you guys can understand what actually breaks, why it breaks, how easy it is to break. Um, I am not talking smack about portals at all. I think they're awesome. I think that the design of a portal is an amazing thing, what it does. You've got portals on Hummers, uh, military stuff. Unimogs use portals, <laughs> so uh, trophy trucks, now four-wheel drive trophy trucks are designing and, and have portals on the front. So I think that they all have their place, and certainly in the mud, big portals have a, a solidified spot that'll never go away. Um, for what we do, maybe not the best, um, and certainly we wouldn't want the extra load and parts breakage, but I think if you design it right, then it would actually be a pretty awesome system. Matt? Jeff Frias actually said, blown budget off-road actually did put portals on a YXZ and hated it so bad they sold the portals. <laughs> <laughs> Picks no, it didn't no happen. No offense to the portals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so if I was to do a portal desert car, I would do a four-inch portal with, because it would line the actual driven up with the lower ball joint and you would lose a lot of the load. And um, I would design it for high speeds with really, really high dollar gears, correct geometry, um, and uh, cooling for the system. It would need it for any desert racing, that's for sure. But um, th as far as lifts are concerned, to get clearance for mud, Coral is the way to go on top of, if you haven't already done, other lifts. Um, so speaking of lifts, ride height, we have mud spring kits and portal spring kits. If you look at our site now, you're going to see mud specific and uh, portal specific spring kits, which are going to get you the lift that most mud guys want, but with suspension that actually will move and function so you're not driving around feeling every rock. Steve. I got nothing. Oh, I thought you were waving your hand or are you over there, you're just smacking Matt. I didn't even move my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even do I was just standing here reading all the... We have some sick people in the audience. Let's hear some of the sick people, We have people, some sick sir. people. Well, uh, with geometry and Rich, math. Rich Fortin said, I just signed in, and I hear talk about four inches blowing stuff and huge loads. Y'all talking about Chase? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rich, yes, we are. Yes, good one. Uh, I, I like the way you think. Yeah. There's some dirty there, There's a lot Mitch, of comments you got? about Chase. <laughs> there's a lot of dirty comments. <laughs> Everyone uh, knows I like portals. Mm -hmm. Mike, Mike Dubs said Chase will take the extra loads. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. man. Um, <laughs> serious question from Danny. It might be off topic. It might not. Uh, XP1000, would running the front diff constantly cause a seize or survive almost every ride? Uh, we run in four-wheel drive on every vehicle at all times, 100% pinned. No issues with that. Run the piss out of it. Uh, Four-wheel drive is also faster than the desert if you want to go, if you are trying to race. Sometimes it sucks when you have to go to two-wheel drive. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in two-wheel drive, and uh, it gets a whole <laughs> lot slower than four-wheel drive if you're running in the desert. That's Matt spends sure. a lot of time on his side. This is true. <laughs> so two-wheel drive, uh, you mean the right two? <laughs> yeah, which or which you side is your two? two? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, think, uh, portals, uh, I think portals are cool, and I think what everybody's doing out in the mud is really cool. And we're going to be doing a portal set 
and uh, big wheels and dubs. Yeah. Uh, dubs. Big dubs and tires. Sorry. Um, on the on the general, and Jeanette just doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> so she, <laughs> she, might, she might be mudding and <laughs> rear really quick. So be on the lookout for another shop car uh, that, that you guys haven't seen in a little bit. But cool. I think we're good. Yeah. We're if you good. guys don't have any more technical questions, you got nothing else on your phones. Nope. Then uh, let's uh, let's get out of here. Take a look at this beautiful People Honda. Want to people want to see cars in the cars. shop. That is something someone. Oh, else. everyone wants to see. Mitch, okay. What well. are we doing this Honda over here? Uh, it's a Honda, Chase. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, bought a Honda. What are you doing to it, Mitchy boy? Valving Springs, new kit for the 21. Nice. What do we got in the shop? KIX over there. Too. Looks like uh, a, a general. One with a RC2s. General. A uh, ooh, RC2s on a general. Before hmm. we look at the cars, look at the guys in shipping right now. Holy smokes! Talk about stacks. Yeah, they're definitely bo doing some crazy boxing. That's for sure. But Steve will show you a new option. If you guys don't already know this, we have two and a half inch RC2s for. Polaris General. The General. So all you guys back in the mud nats with uh, generals that are three feet off the ground, you guys have a shock option that's badass. It's going to make that thing ride a whole lot better than it currently does in the mud. Even at super slow speeds, we can make it really plush for you guys so you don't get abused and your arms don't get shaken off the wheel. What else we got? Care X. And then uh, XP. XP. Another XP. XP. And, DS. And, uh, and a DS. So cars Good in the shop Coleman. today, a little bit of a mix. It's kind of how we like it, right, Steve? Yep. Like Chase likes it. Oh, a little yeah. bit both A little bit of everything. So uh, why don't you take us out of here, Steve? All Thank right, you. everybody. If you are looking to buy anything off the website, please visit www.shocktherapist.com or call into the shop at 623-217-4959. Wow. All right, you guys. See you on Thursday. Get your